Welcome back to another Frugal Friday. I'm Jesse, and this is Kim, and we're here reading through the book, The Art of Frugal Hedonism. Kim, what chapter are we on today? We are on chapter 15, which is Find Free Third Places. Every time we look at these chapters ahead of time, I think probably 80% of the time I say, Ooh, I love that one, and this was no exception. I do really love this That's one. That's true. <laughs> If you currently eat out a lot, you may go into withdrawal if you try and cut down, but there's a high probability that what you are missing isn't the food so much as the third place factor. This neat little term describes a place that's not work or home, but a third kind of place where you feel at ease in a part of the greater world. Town squares serve this function beautifully in many cultures where they are used as a staple of the community's going out life. People set themselves up on a bench to watch the passing crowds or take a leisurely stroll arm in arm, pausing to chat when they pass acquaintances. Teenagers get all teenagery in giggly group huddles, glancing excitedly over their shoulders to see who could be glancing back. You might buy a cob of roasted corn on a stick or a handful of grain to scatter to the pigeons, but it's not obligatory. You feel refreshed by having been in the world and stopping to drink it in. There are very few obvious non-commercial substitutes in your average Western city. It took your authors some practice to establish a repertoire of non-spending oriented third places. We very much like our local park, which is used heavily by the surrounding community, and we often go lounge there at sunset and exchange pleasantries with people and their dogs. Maybe we bring a beer and a bag of peanuts. Maybe we don't. It feels like a proper third place occasion though, and it costs zero to 10 bucks. The library serves beautifully as a third place too. When the weather is bad, it is positively luxurious to go hunker down in the temperature controlled environment for an afternoon, writing, reading, or gazing idly at the humans, speculating about their lives. Perhaps you bump into an angular old man why do you feel like you've seen his face somewhere before? And he drops a book titled 101 Evil Uses for Cat Souls. You try to hand it back to him, but he merely pushes rudely past you. Minutes later, you hear a scream that is unmistakably that of Mrs. Finnegan, the head librarian. Where is Sergeant Caper, the library cat, anyway, you wonder? And why is there blood on my... Oh, sorry. We just got this book muddled with the feline murder mystery we're also currently working on. The beach is another great third place as is a well-used community garden. But you can definitely get more creative. We had a midwinter date in a laundromat once after noticing what a great view of the streetscape the big windows offered. A little picnic, the warmth of the dryers, classic hits FM radio for a pleasingly dubious soundtrack, and an endless stream of passing humanity to provoke philosophical pontifications. Smashing. As fond as your author's memories of that evening are, its occurrence does tend to bring home how lacking in easily identifiable free communal spaces many modern cities are. You may have an even more challenging time finding one if you live in a rural area, although if you can nurse a drink for an hour or so. The country pub can be a better cheap social space than you'd find in most big cities. Check out the pointers in the box below and see if you can come up with any more. If you can't, why not start one of your own? Your local council may even be prepared to help. While it's definitely tricky to find public spaces that meet all the above criteria, your authors have noticed that it's possible to somewhat satiate the urge to be in the world and gazing comfortably at it in other ways. Choose to focus on your surroundings rather than on a handheld electronic device while traveling on public transport or while waiting for a friend on the steps of a public building. Do a spot of people watching. Look at the tops of buildings and trees. Let your brain be loose. Walk more slowly down the street and survey the sights. Simply by sitting back and looking outwards, we can replicate the mental state we are chasing when we go into public spaces and pay for something as an excuse to feel leisurely there. And this little box says, doesn't this sound tops? Ray Oldenburg, who coined the term, says a good third place should include the following characteristics. It should be cheap or free, easy to get to for many, welcoming and comfortable, occupants have little or no obligation to be there, no emphasis on anyone's social or economic status, both new and familiar faces should be found there, a playful mood where conversation is the main activity, and feels like a home away from home. 
We are willing to bet 50 of our seldom squandered dollars that half of the world's psychologists would go out of business if there were more places like this. Hmm. Well, this is something that unfortunately doesn't get to be taken advantage of as much right now. True. With this darn pandemic going on. Mm -hmm. But I think we can still find some places. Um, for instance, you just went down for a little swim in the water down by our house today. Mm -hmm. And um, I walked along the beach as you swam in the water. Mm -hmm. And um, that was free. And that park is actually a really commonly used third place for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, it's very it's large. always busy with people, whether they're having an exercise class or sitting down at tables or having a gathering or walking together. It seems like quite a few people go there. Um, more people, obviously, when we're not, you know, during a pandemic. But uh, even still, there's quite a few people that are gathering for outdoor social distancing activities together. But the concept that they're talking about here, I think, um, I best see it as far as um, when you get to take a vacation and mm. your mindset when you're on vacation versus when you're at home. And right now, we're actually in the middle of a staycation um, mm. as we can't really go much places. And so we decided just to get some stuff done around here. Mm -hmm. And I took the week off and Kim took the week off from her stuff. But um, Kim is not very good at staycationing. Mm -hmm. um, she's really good at vacationing. She can relax <laughs> and whatnot when we get out of the house and go somewhere. She can read her book all day and relax and stuff. But in staycationing, um, she's nonstop doing chores <laughs> and all sorts of stuff. So uh, I think that's kind of what they're saying here is get out of your normal place where you feel like you have to do stuff, get stuff done, take a book. Mm -hmm. um, or just um, sit around and people watch and let your mind just relax and reset. Mm -hmm. So I've definitely found that uh, meeting friends in third places is something that we really enjoy doing. Typically we're walking, so maybe we'll find a local park or a local trail and we'll walk together there. And that's actually really nice. It's free. We're getting a little bit of exercise and we're able to talk and be out in nature. Uh, my friend Danielle is really good at finding third places. She often will take a stack of books that she could never possibly get through all of them and a blanket and some pillows and go to a park and just hang out there for the whole day. And mm -hmm. sometimes there's a river at the park. Sometimes she goes to the park without the river. And so she's really, really good at finding a third place and being there. Um, and when you're allowed to have social activity, she'll do that with others. But I know that we have met up at this park that's between the United States and Canada over the last few months, and Danielle and I will just hang out there with our pillows and blankets and just kind of chill and relax. And again, it is kind of like what you were talking about where it's a vacation of sorts, right? So it's you taking intentional time to kind of break out of your normal pattern and find a space that doesn't cost money and hang out with someone you know you like and enjoy and I did feel that today for sure when I was down at the park swimming. Yeah, great. Well, let us hear about what kind of third places you guys like to enjoy. Is it a park? Is it, um, you know, I don't know, what is it? So, mm -hmm. and then um, share with us those different places that you like. And we're going to go ahead and call this one here as it sounds like our brother-in-law just got home and I'm guessing their dogs are going to start barking very quickly here. So, um, thanks for watching. And we hope you tune into our next video. Bye.